Hello, my name is Laura from Intelligent Controls, and today I'd like to introduce you to a new product called the Smart Switch. You can find this on our website. At a basic level, the Smart Switch provides us with more relays that are easy to control and label from a Victron GX touchscreen. I have a little demo board here with some random lights and fans that I found in my shed to demonstrate how the Smart Switch integrates with Victron's GUI. So the smart switch is a digital switch for DC powered fans, pumps, fridges, whatever needs DC power. It has four independently controlled output channels that can be set as on off, momentary or dimmable switches. If four relays are not enough for your needs, don't worry, the smart switch communicates over CAN bus with the servo so we can daisy chain these devices as needed without taking up precious USB ports on our Servo or a Chrono GX. You can mount them anywhere in a vehicle or a boat using a standard American network cable, which is really nice. You will want to terminate any open CAN network connections. The setup for this device is really intuitive, but be sure to update your firmware on your GX so you're using the most up-to-date interface. When you connect the smart switch, it will populate on the device list of your GX and under setup, you can start to configure each output channel. You'll also notice with the updated GUI, an extra switch icon in the upper corner. That's another way to access your new relays. I've renamed my smart switch accessory manager, but under settings, devices, you can name this device however you like. You can also group them, which I'll show you shortly. But grouping is really helpful if you have more than one smart switch in a system. One of the limitations on the onboard servo relays was that we had no way to label them. You'll see four switches that can now be controlled with your GX touchscreen or on the remote console inside VRM. Under setup, I can open each channel and choose the type of switch I want. I can name it something else or I can assign it to a group. Maybe you'd like to group them as indoor lights and outdoor lights. In this case, I have a channel called night light in a group called lighting. I have a second channel that I've also used lighting as the group name. So both of those will appear together as their own window pane on the home screen. The main idea here is that as you add switches, you need a way to organize them in a way that makes sense and is easy to find. If a channel is being managed somewhere else, for example, in node red based off of a motion sensor or something else that is automatic, and we don't want it to be controlled from the touch screen, we can toggle off show controls and the relay will be hidden from the main home screen display. If you're not using one of the relays on the smart switch, it's also nice to just hide it until you're ready to use it. Under each channel, we can also see the fuse rating. The smart switch has a digital fuse that's rated for a minimum of two amps and a maximum of five amps. At 5 amps, this translates to about 60 watts at 12 volts or 120 watts at 24 volts. That's the maximum power the smart switch will allow to pass through it. If you need more than that, say you want to run a big heater, you can. You just need the right sized relay. There are lots of options for this, but the point is that you can use the smart switch to control other relays. For most marine and RV applications with 12 or 24 volt loads, this is all we need to turn them on and off. Looking at the four channels set up here, the first is a momentary switch. There are lots of momentary switches that could be useful. Maybe you'd like to turn your batteries off remotely or push a button to silence an alarm. It's one signal, not a latching on off switch. These channels are dimmable, but you can also toggle them on and off. This is mostly used for lights. It's PWM or pulse width modulating at different frequencies based on where you move this up and down. Some fans can be controlled with a dimmable switch. So if your fan is too noisy, you can dim it down to find that sweet spot. But in general, the advantage here is that once you find the right setting, you can return to it again and again by simply turning the switch on and off because it retains that dimmed set point. Each channel can be switched off or on from the touchscreen in order to reset it remotely if we overload the circuit, which is really helpful. You can feed the smart switch with different voltages, and this input voltage is what is powering those loads. 
And because we're fused digitally, we don't need another panel with fuses. We have circuit overload protection and we're able to monitor how many amps are going through. So while we're calling it a switch, a remote switch, a digital switch, it's really functioning as a load controller. The relay output voltages match the input voltage to this device, 8 to 32 volts. This does limit some of our 48 volt applications, but since no one is running 48 volt loads, a small DC to DC converter to get you back to 12 or 24 volts is still probably the best approach. But to summarize, the smart switch is really unique in that it's not only switched, but also powered and fused in a single device, meaning that because these are digitally switched outputs, we can monitor and adjust each one. We know that they're working because we can see the current, and if we have an overload, we have digital switching to turn it back on remotely. Again, each output is fused up to 5 amps, and if that isn't enough capacity for you, you can piggyback or use the smart switch as a helper relay with an additional 12 or 24 or 48 or 120 volt relay. Of course, when we do that, we lose track of the current flow to the load, but we're still able to see that the relay is operating. You are probably already thinking about ways to use this device uh, to solve problems in your system or for customers. We would love to hear your ideas, comments, uh, and feedback in the question section below. And to receive updates on future videos, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.